This is my master sourdough bread recipe. It's the recipe I use whenever I score a loaf of bread. If you've seen my content before, you should know that any sourdough recipe will work just fine as long as you understand proper proofing. Before you start, you should make sure you have ready at hand a peaked 100% hydration sourdough starter. This recipe makes two loaves. Let's get started. Add to a large mixing bowl 720 grams of water. To that, add 200 grams of your 100% hydration active sourdough starter. Mix well with a fork. To that, stir in 20 grams of salt. Add 850 grams of strong white bread flour. One hundred and fifty grams of einkorn spelt or whole wheat flour. I used einkorn this time. Mix by hand or with a dough whisk until thoroughly combined. You're going to mix it until it's a pretty shaggy looking dough. We're not going to worry about gluten development too much at this point because we're going to be spending the next three hours building that gluten with coil folds and stretch and folds. So for now, mix until it's a shaggy dough, cover it with a bowl cover, and let it rest for 30 to 45 minutes. After 30 to 45 minutes, you're going to wet your hands and perform your first stretch and fold. You can already tell that the dough has relaxed and the gluten has already started to develop. A stretch and fold consists of pulling the edges of the dough ball and folding it over upon itself and repeating it until all sides have been folded. I like to rotate it so the smooth side of the dough is on top. Cover the dough with a bowl cover and let it rest for 30 to 45 minutes. After the dough has rested, perform your first coil fold by gently lifting the dough with both hands from the middle until one end loosens off the side of the bowl. Gently lower the dough to allow the loosened end to tuck under the middle and repeat with all four sides. Cover the dough and let it rest for 60 to 90 minutes. Perform your second coil fold. Cover and let it rest for another 60 to 90 minutes. This is your third coil fold. At this point, you can tell the gluten is nicely developed. The dough feels tight, it doesn't stretch as far, and it doesn't break very easily. Let the dough rest until it's double in volume from when you started. Once the dough has doubled in size, it's time to pre-shape the dough. While it's not always necessary to pre-shape the dough, if you're making more than one loaf, it makes the final stage of shaping a lot easier. Divide the dough in two. Gently use wet fingers to knock back the larger air bubbles. And once you've done that, fold the dough into itself. Turn the dough smooth side up and use the surface of the counter to create tension on the top of the dough by pulling it towards you. You can see the dough is nice and jiggly.
Rest the dough as is on the counter, uncovered, for 30 to 60 minutes. Now it's time to shape the dough. Dust the top lightly with flour. Use your fingers to gently spread out the dough. Now, I'm not going to explain this shaping process step by step. I think it's best for you to observe and try to see what works for you. There are many different methods of shaping sourdough. The goal is to get rid of the really large air pockets and to achieve surface tension so you have a nice rise when the dough bakes. You create that surface tension on the top of the dough by using the stickiness of the dough on the counter and gently pulling it. Place the dough in a cloth lined banneton or bowl. Pop any of those large bubbles that are on the surface of the dough. Let the dough rest for 30 to 45 minutes. While you don't have to do a final stitch at this point, I like to do it to create extra surface tension. Cover the dough with a bowl cover and place it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. The next day, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're planning to do a decorative score, while the oven is preheating, freeze the dough for 30 to 60 minutes. Once you've finished your intricate score, put the dough in the preheated Dutch oven for seven minutes. Remove the dough from the oven and complete your expansion score. The expansion score is the deeper score that allows the dough to really expand in the oven. Bake the dough in a covered Dutch oven for 25 minutes. Remove the cover and let it bake for another 10 minutes. Let the dough cool for 45 minutes before slicing. Did you like this video? Try out the recipe and let me know how it worked for you in the comments. Enjoy!